There's this sort of prevailing, unilaterally accepted myth that if you play any species of shooter and want to develop some truly sick aim, you must absolutely turn off mouse acceleration. Almost every experienced aimer will tell you the same thing. Go into your clients, window settings, any third-party drivers you might be running, and make sure you uncheck any sort of box that might inadvertently accelerate your aim. It's like rule number one of the high I'd like to FPS please starter pack. The reason for this, of course, is rather intuitive. By accelerating the speed at which your cursor moves, by accelerating the speed at which your mouse moves, you make the math behind your aiming mechanics exceedingly more complicated and tamper with the intricacies of your muscle memory in a way that's just stupid, right? Does mouse acceleration screw up your aim or does it have the ability to level it up? To forge this sort of high sends, low sends hybrid whose mastery, as a handful of utterly cracked competitors have already demonstrated, might actually offer the best of both worlds. Let's find out. Do the things. Thanks. All right, so first things first, what is mouse acceleration? And I swear, this one isn't just for the league players out there. Like, in theory, the concept of mouse excel is actually pretty straightforward. It's just that in application, it can be really complicated. So let's start with the theory side of things. To reiterate, mouse acceleration is a feature that accelerates the speed at which your mouse cursor travels, depending on the speed at which you make your physical mouse movements. This means that with mouse excel off, if you move your mouse slowly from, say, here to here, the cursor will traverse whatever distance your DPI permits at the same exact speed. With mouse excel on, traversing the same distance at the same velocity won't actually make any difference. It's when you flick the mouse quickly that said acceleration actuates, causing the cursor to fling further than if you'd had acceleration off. How much further, you ask? Well, that's the part where the practical complication of all of this comes into play. You see, in order to use mouse acceleration, or at the very least understand it, you need to make pitiful use of this big scary thing called math. More specifically, something called an acceleration curve. Now, for those of you that never took calculus, this might be a little daunting. For us kings and queens who did, it's really very basic. The curve charts either the exponential or incremental growth of the sensitivity multiplier, as determined by the exponent you've selected to be the... Wait, why the f*** am I explaining all of this? I literally have someone on deck who they pay to do this. Col Colton, do me a favor, buddy, and just dumb this down for all the psychology majors out there. And now, the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. You heard him. We're not even going to stop at calculus either. That's right. Physics. Okay, I'm mostly kidding. I just needed an excuse to show off my fancy textbooks on camera because what else am I supposed to do with them? Just to make sure we're all on the same page, acceleration is simply defined as the rate of change, or delta for my fellow science nerds, in velocity per unit of time. And this change can occur in many different ways. You can have variable or constant acceleration, and generally third-party mouse drivers will display this with a combination of graphs. Variable acceleration, especially when we're talking about mouse acceleration, tends to take the form of a logarithmic or exponential curve, either gaining speed quickly, then tapering off, essentially hitting a maximum sensitivity, or ramping up slower, but then gaining speed, well, exponentially. Or some combination of these two graphs, if you want to get really spicy, I guess. We can see these curves in everything from the default CSGO and Logitech acceleration curves, all the way to Microsoft's enhanced pointer precision. That is horrendous. Please promise me that you won't play games with that abomination turned on. Regardless, there is an alternative to variable acceleration that I, and plenty of others way more qualified to talk about aiming, would recommend. 
A constant acceleration graph will give you a linear acceleration, so there's a steady and much more repeatable connection between the speed you move your mouse and the change in sensitivity. The only variables you have to worry about are setting the maximum and minimum sensitivity and how quickly you want to transition between them, aka the slope. As I'm sure you've already guessed, muscle memory is going to come up a lot in this video. And in terms of building up consistent and repeatable motions, a linear acceleration graph is either your best bet or at least the best place to start. If you're planning on doing a dive into mouse acceleration, the raw Excel guide has a very helpful breakdown of each of the parameters to help you tweak each setting to your liking and hopefully find something that works well for you. See, that wasn't so bad. I didn't even break out any of my calculating the slope at any given point in a curve calculus. You're welcome. And that was the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. So yeah, that's how mouse acceleration works. The question, of course, is what's the point of it? Like, does it do anything for you? Well, for starters, it makes your mouse movements more efficient, which is super fantastic if your goal is to become super cracked at like Microsoft Office. The world champion of Excel 2016, an exceptionally hard category. Kevin Matthew DiMacco of USA. How do you have competing spreadsheets? How does that work? <laughs> they give you a packet of instructions and a bunch of data, and you use those to recreate a file. And I believe that you're also an accomplished pianist and mathematician, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> That, ladies and gentlemen, is f***ing esports. Somebody signed this kid. Like, phase Kevin Demacia Langan when? Memes aside, Mouse Excel seems great for things like productivity and esports involving tons of fast, top-level, APM-intensive macro clicking, like MOBAs and RTSs. The question is whether it's any good for shooters. And let me tell you, for a long time, it was. You see, back in the day, when arena shooters were all the rage, desks and mouse pads were smaller, and a lot of mice, PCs, and PC games had mouse acceleration on by default, a ton of world-class aimers earned their keep by mastering the intricacies of said acceleration. Here to help exposit that esteemed epoch of esports history, is none other than one of its constituents. Competitor, turned coach, turned reputed FPS instructor, Ron Rambo Kim. My first experience with Mouse Excel was in Quake 3. Um, so back then I was still playing Counter-Strike professionally, but I loved Quake. It's just a fantastic game. And, you know, I was watching the pro players and I wanted to copy them. And so I downloaded one of their configs. And without me knowing it, it had Mouse Excel in there. So um, I had totally got used to it without even knowing it and like really it was it was such it was a point one So it's such a minuscule amount like I couldn't really tell a difference when I between Counter-Strike and Quake when I turned it off like I could definitely feel it switching off from on um, in like the kind of close range duels and fights. To this day, if you jam out in a frantic, fast paced FPS where shit's constantly flying around you like Quake, Diabotical, even Overwatch, it actually makes a ton of sense for you to at least give Mouse Excel a whirl. But as the popularity of arena shooters started to wane and the father of tack shooters, Counter-Strike, started to really cement itself as esports' premier FPS, so too did this fast, flitty, unreliably modulated aim start to become regarded as this cursed, uncultured thing of the past. Got two sensitivity with default window sense of six and uh, no mouse excel on. Default window sense six. I also play with raw input. In game, j'ai 2,35. And I also have command MRO input. For now, keeping this off is considered generally wise within the gaming community. One of the reasons for this, of course, is that in a slow, methodical shooter like Counter-Strike, where low sensitivities run rampant, you want every movement, every pixel you traverse to be stupidly precise. In games like Counter-Strike, where it's more tactical and slower paced and the action happens in front of you and you kind of just know where to place your crosshair, you know where the fights are gonna happen. 
you don't need that drastic movement left to right. Anything left, a stylish one out of Perfecto, Nico. He's gonna be pushed to OT, or can he claw something oh! out? Two, two to go! That's not to say that there are not some truly exacting executioners out there who crack a shitload of skulls on high sends. But even they operate within the bounds of raw, unhindered one-to-one -one aim. Since, as we've all been told over and over again, it engenders such excellent muscle memory. At least, that's the prevailing wisdom. But, as with all accepted norms, there are exceptions. You see, over the years, there have actually been a handful of big names in Counter-Strike who've managed to crack the upper echelon of competition whilst accelerating their aim. The R and put off, mouse excel on, and the acceleration amount is 1.05, that's default. I play with mouse excel because uh, Brax uses it. But it's safe to say that the most revered of said radicals is the peak pioneering head popper that is Zentares. I'm ready for a flash whenever we call. Behind he you. is jumping. And stash. Nothing has changed, man. Zentares okay. still has feel good. With an acceleration multiplier of 1.05 and some of the filthiest raw mechanical talent of any aimer alive, Zentares stands apart as a mythical unicorn who's seemingly spliced together high and low sensitivity into this like super sends of sorts. For me, if I move my wrist, it has this amount of mobility. So I can only move my mouse this distance without mouse excel. But if I figured out if I could do a 180 by doing like a half wrist flick of, of my half wrist bend, and I was just, you know, and I figured that out and I built that into my memory, um, I would have an advantage over the person that has to do like a full wrist bend and a half wrist bend. So you can kind of maybe incrementally break down depending on the degree of your wrist bend, how much mouse excel affects or helps you, and then you can increase or lower that value. Which begs the question, could mouse acceleration help foster a deeper, more dynamic style of aiming? Think about it. With Excel on, you could maintain a slow and steady DPI when making micro adjustments, but the second you need to spin around and 180 a fool, execute a high velocity flick that quickly turns you into a high sense robot. I mean, shit, man, just watch Zantara's do it. Mouse Excel definitely has its advantages, right? Like you can move your mouse or your crosshair more distance with less space, depending on the situation. Keto finally put to rest after all of the damage at the beginning of the round. Zantara's and Sears and two versus three now that Zantara's turns out to be an absolute beast. What even was that? That's an instant 180. How does he get that? Ridiculous, isn't it? Okay, so like we need to check him PC and game, right? Because that is that is not normally. They don't actually have a kit picked up. I don't know if there's one on the bomb side, but yeah, they need to do something here. He's getting tagged a little bit. They know where he is, but it doesn't matter. He's gonna get four kills, and now he sees Vinny and there's the ace at the end. What a absolutely beastly round from Santaris. Oh. Don't be Rude. Are you kidding me? I swear God, to God. Stop. But here's the thing, right? If mouse acceleration allows aimers to reap the benefits of both types of sensitivity, high and low, then why doesn't everybody use it, right? Well, as you can imagine, it's because it's not that simple. For starters, it can be a nightmare to not only find a good accelerator, but to fine tune it to your liking across multiple esports titles, especially those where certain third party accelerators have triggered certain games as anti cheats. Some mice, even though you use the same sensitivity, it's gonna feel different or it's gonna move a different amount. And then when you had mouse accelerant to that, it's just like, I gotta find this completely new mouse acceleration value to match my new mouse sensitivity value. So, you know, you're, you're stacking on additional variables like that. If you change mouse pad, it has different surface friction speed. So it's just a multiplier variable that makes it very difficult to, to not only learn, but also get accustomed to new equipment. But more importantly, the movements themselves are trickier to master. If I were to try to learn Mouse Excel, and maybe I was testing these different softwares, it's even difficult to do that because it's like, if you move your mouse at five miles per hour and six miles per hour, how do I know I'm moving at five or six every time? 
And then if I move it that six, it's going to move it the crosshair a little bit faster. So it's it's hard to kind of capture that metric, um, and it's totally based on feel. So some days, you know, your forearm position or your posture is different, and that affects you know your angles of your forearm and how you kind of maneuver your arm and stuff. And then the next day you wake up, it's different, and then that affects mouse six sound again. It's just like this. You're opening up a whole, whole, you know, whole other set of variables that you are relying on your feel to know if you're being consistent with. Raw, unadulterated, one-to-one -one aiming may, in a sense, be viewed as limiting, but it's also approachable, intuitive, and reliable. People just sit in corners. Might come 90. Oh, you're insane. Here to help explain why is none other than cracked mainstay, Dr. Madison Klarkowski, a professor of computer human interaction at the University of Saskatchewan. Turning mouse acceleration off did kind of emerge as a strategy for beginners, for learning um, a new FPS, for learning a game like Counter-Strike, because, well, mouse acceleration speed is obviously dependent on the distance that you move your mouse, which introduces a kind of moving variable or a floating variable, as opposed to no mouse acceleration, which is uh, more on the surface level consistent, or at least it requires less um, mental math, mental calculation, adaptation to those kind of uh, variations in movement. So I would argue that then because you remove that extra variable of needing to be cognizant of the distance you move your mouse and how that influences mouse acceleration, it actually represents a reduced cognitive load for those who are learning a new input modality. In a sense then, turning off mouse excel is sort of akin to playing on stretched or turning down your graphic settings all the way. Insofar as it simplifies things for your brain, gives you less to think about, and by extension, allows you to focus on the things that do matter. And when you have that reduced cognitive load, when you don't have to think about your mouse inputs as thoroughly, you can instead start to focus on other critical um, parts of learning the first person shooter, for example, weapon spray or learning the map, learning callouts. Yeah, push front. In fence, in fence, okay. in fence. Oh my god, Dimitri. Dimitri. You're back. Oh my god. And it's because of this that for years, the tendency of experienced aimers has been to instruct newer ones to simply turn off Mouse Excel from the get go. So by simplifying those import mechanisms, by turning mouse acceleration off, it reduces, you know, that extra thing that you need to think about, merging of action and awareness of becoming one with your mouse, I suppose, a little bit quicker because you don't need to worry about, we well, don't have that added cognitive load with that extra variable, that extra factor that you're needing to learn or that you're needing to account for. It's also because of this that said experienced aimers rarely, if ever, introduce it into their own skill sets, since they're terrified of creating even the slightest disturbance when it comes to their well-honed muscle memory. You know, sensitivity is, you know, the holy grail of, of a FPS gamer. It's like finding that perfect sense. You've got total mouse control, you know, sensitivity control, crosshair control. That's what you want. So if you start adding mouse excel, it, you might go into this black hole where it's like, um, you know, I was better on point two mouse excel, but you know, if I was on point three, I would have hit that shot. And then you're starting to mess, mess with that on top of your sensitivity. So again, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's one of those very advanced values and feelings that, that I would only recommend for the expert players. No idea you came from Quake. Have you ever played with Excel? I did play Excel Waltz in Source, but because all the Counter-Strike players basically were like, why are you doing this? You know, it just kind of got taken out of me pretty early on. Obviously, as people became um, better at playing the game, um, they became pros, they're not going to revert to Mouse um, Excel on because they're now used to Mouse Excel off, right? And um, they're not going to mess with a good thing at that point. But you can't help but wonder, should they? Like, if Mouse Excel's this super fancy advanced mechanic that's not beginner friendly enough for novices, but way too weird and out there and different for well established experts, then who's it for? 
Like, shouldn't these experienced aimers who are looking to level up their game at least be giving it a shot? That's the question that YouTuber Pingify set out to answer about midway through 2020. And if you haven't checked out his video on the subject, you should. It's excellent. After he, an experienced FPS player, immersed himself in Mouse Excel for an extended period of time, he walked away something of a fan. Am I gonna keep using Mouse Excel? Yeah, I think I will. I still love the crazy reactions I get when I say I use it, but more importantly, it feels good to use. I can finally use that stupid low sensitivity I really enjoy without giving up the crazy wide angle aimbot moments. And I believe that I still haven't spent enough time to master it yet. And he's not the only aimer to be pleasantly surprised at how much they like it. Bro, maybe I should turn on Excel right now. Just a little bit. This is gonna be fun. I'm really high. It was uh, interesting. Nice. Good. Content! The default. Oh! Fuck, dude. <laughs> Now, does that mean that everyone and their mother should up and adopt Mouse Excel and that we should be indoctrinating new aimers with it from the get-go? Not necessarily. Hell, some newer titles like Valorant still don't natively support it. But should we as esports enthusiasts at least be a little more open-minded when it comes to potential benefits? Probably. I think it would be very neat to do a study on this where you have, you know, one group of novice players who have never played Counter-Strike before, who you introduce you to the game, you get them to um, have mouse acceleration uh, turned off, and then you have the no another group with mouse XL left on. And, uh, you know, return to them in a month and see how they perform, return to them in six months and see how they perform, because that would be a much needle way of sort of approaching an answer of, you know, mouse XL versus no mouse XL, like does it take time longer to learn? We might see something where, you know, we might see um, the the group that has mouse acceleration turned on, it might take them a lot longer to um, reach a certain standard, maybe the mouse XL off group would reach that standard faster, but they might eventually overtake the mouse XL off group. Imagine how nutty some of us would be if we'd picked up mouse XL from the day that we first took up FPS. And while picking up the feature today isn't gonna like turn you into Xantares or anything at a moment's notice, you'd be surprised at how quickly even a veteran aimer could adjust to the change. You know, old dogs can learn new tricks, right? I totally feasible for you to learn it. Obviously, there's going to be that frustrating um, week or two week window where you're not performing anywhere near what your standard is because you're adapting to this new um, interaction with your mouse. Um, and that can be kind of a major uh, turn off in using mouse acceleration because you know it's very easy to get frustrated and just be like, screw it, I'm going back. Um, so I would say if you're interested in uh, adapting to mouse acceleration, you do have to give it, you know, a good college try, like give it a good two weeks to adapt to it um, and see how it feels for you. So do yourself a favor and start accelerating your shit, just for the hell of it, just to see what all the anguish is about. There are no guarantees that it'll turn you into a more capable, complete and dynamic aimer, but you won't know unless you try. So try. Let's go. Making fun of psychology majors let's, instead of me. Let's go. It's it's the fucking it's the fucking the get you know the the arms crossed the oh like the yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Muscly dudes. yeah 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 make Colton Dimitri making fun of psych majors yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do that shit all the time in school yes that's right physics Ooh. these textbooks are heavy God I'm a nerd. No one's gonna be confused. You know what? It's YouTube, guys. It's YouTube. Like the video, do the sub. It's your boy here. Turn on notifications.